ਵੀਰੋ What a memorable day, what a momentous occasion. This is a day, rarely is a chance that we will forget. 23rd of August 2023 is going to be etched on each and every Indian mind for many years to come. That's a given. India has created history and this happened the moment that Chandrayaan-3 successfully soft landed on the moon. And it happened on the dot. Four minutes past six in the evening, Indian Standard Time, as it was planned, it went to plan. In fact, it was a textbook landing for India's ambitious lunar expedition, Chandrayaan-3, successfully landing on the moon's south pole, which makes India now the only country to ever, ever land on the south pole of the moon. Congratulating the scientists over at ISRO, the Prime Minister has said the achievement is going to change all the narratives, all the stories about the moon. In fact, congratulations are pouring in from uh, different parts of the world, India making her mark on the moon. Here are some of the reactions that uh, we've been tracking. जब हम अपनी आँखों के सामने ऐसा इतिहास बनते हुए देखते हैं तो जीवन धन्य हो जाता है ऐसी ऐतिहासिक घटनाएं राष्ट्र जीवन की चिरंजीव चेतना बन जाती है ये पल अविस्मरणीय है ये क्षण अभूतपूर्व है ये क्षण विकसित भारत के संखनाद का है आई थिंक इट्स ऑल क्लियर टू यू आई डोंट हैव टू टेल से वेन वेन इट इज सच ए टफ जर्नी फॉर गोइंग टू मून एंड लैंडिंग सॉफ्ट लैंडिंग विच इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर एनी नेशन टू अचीव टूडे इवन विद एडवांसमेंट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड वी अचीविंग इट इन जस्ट टू टू मिशन द फर्स्ट मिशन एड एंड नैरो मिस एंड नाउ वी अचीव इट सो परफेक्टली it gives confidence to configure missions to going not only going to moon going to mars sometimes land on the mars maybe in the future going to venus and other planets and and also sometimes go beyond uh, uh, asteroids and others we should think about it i think you should all support us to plan such missions with a very very cost effective mission nobody in the world can ever do like this what we do and nobody will be able to succeed maybe in the minimum most attempts so i request each one of your support encouragement the whole of the nation should be behind us to do this it is a it's a it, it, the success is a sweet news for us and not only for us but for the entire nation the, the nation is waiting for this moment and now it has happened uh, successfully i'm extremely happy that it's happened and successfully and uh, i would say, say that congratulations to the whole indian people for the wonderful success of this chandrayaan 3 mission and this is history in the making where india has successfully landed on the and this is a huge success for the country where india is on the moon and this is the moon out here and this is the celebration in rajputana rifles the army jawan here who been cheering this particular mission they are just overwhelmed like every indian out here bharat mata ki jai slogans are being shouted and every indian is now full of emotions because this is the moment for which the indians were and this is the bharat mata jai slogans are being chanted here in the rajputana rifles regimental center in delhi and this is the moment ye batayega ki kitni badi baat hai kitni badi baat hai kitni badi baat hai bharat ke liye bahut hi garv ki aur bahut badi baat hai isse hamare desh 
इसका नाम भारतीय सेना का वैज्ञानिकों का इतना बड़ा जोश आएगा कि नई नई तकनीकियां करने के लिए और भी उत्साह बढ़ेगा लगातार भारत माता की जय हम सुन रहे हैं आपको कैसा महसूस हो रहा है हमारे को बहुत अच्छा महसूस हो रहा है हमारे देश ने बहुत ज्यादा तरक्की करी है The advancements in uh, space technology and of course the possibilities of uh, growth on the commercial aspect as well that is going to be something that uh, we are looking forward to happening uh, how is all of this going to help us spur that part of our industry here's a factoid india has 400 space related companies which makes us the fifth largest in the world when it comes to our space industry out of those over 100 are actually startups we have a strong startup ecosystem in india and a large part of it 100 of them are oriented towards the space industry so we'll get into a conversation with experts what's the outlook for the growth of india's space industry before that let's just put this in context about uh, the startup ecosystem what india really brings uh, to the table for india and to the world and for that my colleague sharad dube is joining us sharad tell us about uh, the startup ecosystem and how it's looking into the opportunities that the space industry around the world offers it in focus we are having the indian space agencies as well as the startups and the most important thing is the increased focus coming on the satellite launch services now the important thing which is the synergies which will be there between the startups as well as isro is the costing part and of course more technical collaborations are expected to happen and whenever there is a better costing for the projects then the entire mission cost they come down and do remember they come at a fraction of cost of what the international agencies offer and overall even the government push has been there coming for the space tech and the question arises how has the funding been there for the space tech and over the years if we see the funding has actually picked up and from 2020 there were only just 21 odd startups in the space tech space and now that has increased to almost 150 startups till date of 2023 and in the funding numbers also look at it it has been very promising and currently almost 200 million dollars plus of funding has been seen over the last 18 odd months now apart from the funding there are certain startups also which are there in this space which i would like to mention and these are the names which are there in the in the small cap as well as the mid cap categories if you would like to say the valuations are less than 50 million dollars and the names include pixel skyroot aerospace satcho agnicool cosmos as well as dhruva space Thanks for that. Uh, now let's speak to Akash Sinha, Assistant Professor of Practice at the Shiv Nadar Institution, Institution of Eminence. Uh, great to have you with us, uh, sir. It's a momentous occasion. Tell us, uh, in your opinion, how well we've done in the space race. Our premier space agency, ISRO, is the sixth largest in the world. We're not just reaching for the moon and successfully now at that. We're also the first nation to reach the Martian orbit in our first attempt. ISRO has a commercial arm of its own. Uh, the one where it offers satellite launch facilities, like my colleague was pointing out, and uh, New Space India, which is the business side of ISRO, uh, does these tech transfers to private players as well. So, where do you place ISRO now in tapping into that space race, sir? And what's your assessment of its prowess to forge ahead uh, in light of all the competition globally? Uh, thank you so much. First of all, congratulations to everyone. I think it's been a great, momentous day. Uh, having landed on moon on the south pole uh, coming to isro see there are a couple of phenomenal things that isro has done one is that <clears throat> see in the chandrayaan missions the first chandrayaan mission that went in 2008 <clears throat> we found water on moon for 50 years nasa and other agencies have been going there but we eventually found water there and once we found water there a new lunar race has started so you can say that isro has actually been the pioneer of the new lunar race huh? now everybody again wants to go back to moon because we found a great amount of water over there secondly if you see isro has an amazing track record of successful space launches uh, i believe more than 40 consecutive successful space launches have been done which is why you see that when isro launches more than 100 satellites in space sometimes more than 90 of them are from overseas so i think that way isro has established a lot of credibility in this space race one place where isro needs to catch up is that it needs to build bigger rockets and that's where i think private players will come into play we need to have rockets that could carry weights of something like 20 30000 kg of payload right now we are at 5 6000 kg so that is something i'm sure will happen in future 
quickly can it happen and what's holding us back? Because uh, this entire need for bigger rockets, that has been articulated from ISRO's side as well. Um, we have spoken about ISRO. Tell us about India's private space industry, sir, in the wake of Chandrayaan-3. Um, if you believe that it is uh, going to get a further fill-up, which areas in particular, uh, you did mention bigger rockets, but uh, in fact, this immediate turbo boost that could come with a successful mission like Chandrayaan-3, uh, which areas would benefit most? I think uh, in general, not just space, but all the technology areas, will gain, India will gain a lot of credibility. Huh? So that's, that's one part. Uh, secondly, just coming to space, there is a big need of companies that could put in lots of satellites in space. So in immediate run, there is a lot of need to put lots of satellites to become, to bring greater connectivity, break, uh, greater internet access everywhere. Secondly, there is a big need to uh, get to space for space tourism and space mining. And I think those two sectors will grow phenomenally well uh, in the coming few years. Like in the automotive sector, we speak about the allied industry, Akar Sinha, the auto component makers. How well has that ecosystem developed in our space industry today? And which are the challenges that uh, we face on that count? Give us a sense of the readiness because uh, we were talking about India's startup ecosystem. How ready are they to take up this gauntlet of playing into the newer opportunities that space exploration affords? So let me uh, <clears throat> mention here that I also have a startup, Omnipresent Robot Tech, and our startup built some of the software for Chandrayaan's Pragyan rover. And so, you know, we had a good interaction with ISRO and figuring out how to get this done. So I, I still think that the ecosystem is still developing, but as uh, more and more public-private partnership happens along with ISRO, you will see more and more startups maturing out to, to serve the space industry. But yeah, it is still, I would say, maturing and it will take a little bit of time. What exactly is it going to take? Because we started out by saying that we house more than 3.5% of the world's space-related companies. Tell us about the funding situation. Uh, you run a startup yourself. Tell us about the funding situation. What are the challenges on that front? Uh, because if we don't get enough of that, then it could get in the way of this phenomenal growth opportunity, don't you think? That is right. I think uh, having this successful landing of ISRO's Chandrayaan 3 mission will probably boost investor confidence in general in India's space industry, both Indian investors as well as overseas investors. There is a lot of funding needed, especially, as I said, for development of large rockets. And I think this is one sector where we would probably also see some large players coming up and then they could be supporting smaller companies, which will then probably get eventually funded once there are, you know, bigger orders from bigger companies there. What about the policy push that is required? Because India's space sector could uh, well complement our aviation and defence sectors. Uh, some of it uh, is uh, happening already, but is that an area that requires more of a policy push from the <laughs> government to make uh, the best case for a more holistic, perhaps a more integrated growth proposition within uh, us, our uh, space prowess? Yes, that is right. Uh, you would have seen that there is a, uh, you know, now, now government has launched something called uh, the, you know, space challenges, huh? just like there were challenges by Army and Air Force. Now there are lots of challenges that are being offered as space challenges, which gives you grants up to like a crore or so, and it might just give you give enough money for startups to build their prototypes and so forth. So that is one part that's happening, but I still think, as you said, a bigger push is needed in terms of bringing systematic policy changes uh, to make this happen. In terms of what you're seeing globally, Akash Sinha, and what is happening in India right now, where exactly are we in that entire space race? If you can give us a sense of the overall global picture and where India now currently stands. <laughs> so see, if you see the overall picture, in terms of smaller satellites and lower payloads, when it comes to that, I think India is on par, if not uh, ahead of, of many other agencies. But when it comes to higher payloads, bigger satellites, and that's where most of the money is, then we are far behind because we just don't have any big rockets. And I think it will become, it will be such a big game changer once we get larger rockets 
then we'll probably get a substantial share of the total international space market. But uh, by way of Chandrayaan-3 and what it has been able to achieve, uh, when you talk about the natural corollaries of growth because of what we've been able to establish with a successful mission and what we could possibly come away with, because the soft landing was an important part, but there is much more for this mission to achieve. Where do you peg that uh, possibility now? Yes, you know, if you see this mission, right from launch to landing, it has happened perfectly. There's been like no deviation, no errors at all. And I think this level of reliability will definitely boost investor confidence. It will boost the confidence in the industry in general. And that, I think, will definitely help uh, the startups in this segment. We will look forward to more in the space industry. A big Philip coming in from uh, the Chandrayaan-3 moon mission. Akash Sinha, many thanks for joining us with your perspective on this. It really helps. And good luck uh, with uh, your space industry-oriented startup as well. Thank you so much.